Hi everyone and welcome to today's demonstration. In this I'll show how to do a sponged gradient over a gold flake clear nail and with that we've got some spider gel and some micro caviar beads and gems to go along with the design. Now this is done over a clear nail and some of the supplies you'll need are your gold flakes. In this case, I used a gold leafing, but you can use any type of gold flake that you have on hand. I've used uh, Johan's transfer gel, but you can use any clear gel since um, it's best to apply it into the wet layer. And to top it, I've used Gelfinity Matte Top Coat. For the gradient, I used EMI Biscay and Moira number nine uh, painting UV gel and to sponge on the gradient I've used these fingertip sponge daubers that I found at my local Texas art supply but you can find these easily online I will leave a link to those as well now I'm gonna go ahead and show you some options that I did. I was playing around and, and wanted to give my sister-in-law some options. The two on the left are single color gradients. I did one in white and one in that teal biscay color. And you can do a three to or a two tone uh, gradient as well. Now this one is what a shiny version would look like. I was also playing around with the marbled look, but my sister-in-law wanted the matte look. So that's what uh, I'll show here. So again, I'm using the Johan's uh, Johan's uh, transfer gel, but again, you can use any clear. You can use a top coat. You can use a base coat. I prefer to apply the flakes into a wet layer. I just think they lay down a little bit better. You get less pieces that stick up that you have to worry about. Um, causing any kind of roughness on the surface of the nail. So once you get a nice even coat of your clear on the nail, I've got again some gold leafing that I took and just tore off some irregular you know, shapes, large sizes, medium sizes, small sizes, just to get it a little bit more interest. And I'm just going to pick up the pieces and uh, apply them randomly onto the nail, making sure that they do lie as flat as you can get them. Once you get them all placed, this is now ready to cure. But before you do, uh, kind of look at it from the side. And if there's any pieces that might be sticking up, try to flatten them down a little bit and cure that to the manufacturer directions for your clear. And I prefer to use the matte top coat when I do my gradients. This uh, I find helps to give the gel paint something to grip to. If you use a shiny top coat, in my experience, it just sort of slips and slides across the surface. Uh, you could try this into the sticky layer of whatever top coat you might have, but I don't know that that would work as well. So again, I recommend the matte. Now there's all sorts of sponging uh, options for you to do. We've all seen the, the use of makeup sponges and there's the sponge dauber tools that are out now. I prefer the Imagine Crafts sponge daubers and I'll show you here in a minute the difference between this particular brand and the other brand that I found at Hobby Lobby. But again, um, this is the one I found at Hobby Lobby. It looks quite similar, but uh, the sponge itself is different than the one from the Imagine Craft uh, brand. So again, you can use a makeup sponge or a makeup round. The, you have the sponging tools again that are, you can find these anywhere online. I 
these have their purpose, but I prefer the fingertip daubers because of the flatter head on the sponge. I just find that that's easier for me to work with. So again, here's the difference between the two and I'm going to zoom in and hopefully you can see the difference. I showed this in my previous sponge dauber video, but for those who haven't seen that, this one on the left has a smoother sponge head on it than the cheaper one from Hobby Lobby. If you run your finger over the top of them, you can feel just how much smoother the Imagine Crafts dauber is compared to the one from Hobby Lobby. And that's the reason I prefer that. Now, if you're working with gel, you of course want to mask off the skin. You don't want any risk of contact dermatitis with the gel. So be sure that you mask off the skin. If you're allergic to latex, then use another product. So I'm going to take my dauber here and uh, using my metal tool here, it's just easier than having to clean a brush in between. I'm going to place my gel paint uh, onto the sponge like so. If you find that you've applied too much, you can daub off a little bit of excess, just press it down a little bit. And now we're ready to apply onto our nail. And I'm just using a pouncing method here, just back and forth and back and forth. Light pressure is all I'm doing here, along with moving up and down the nail to help transition those two colors together. Now I've been asked about gel polish and I don't recommend it only because it's typically not as pigmented as gel paints are and you might find you're having to use more layers to get the same uh, saturation and color. So I would go ahead and recommend the gel paints. Now to smooth the transitions even more on the nail, I like to take a, a clean dauber, spray a little bit of alcohol on it, dab the excess off on a paper towel and then come through and lightly uh, pounce across the top of that surface just to smooth that out a little bit more. And once you get the desired look, you can go ahead and cure this in your lamp. I cured this for 30 seconds in an LED lamp. You always want to cure each layer before you continue on with the next layer. I'm taking my dauber and I'm applying more gel. And now we're going to apply our second layer. Just using the same lightly dabbing technique, side to side. taking that clean dauber with just a little bit of alcohol again and coming in and smoothing that transition. And now we're doing the third layer after curing. And now we have our cured gradient out of the lamp. I'm topping it with the matte top coat, but at this point, if you wish to uh, have a shiny surface, you would use a shiny top coat. I've had many people ask me about cleaning the daubers. It's very simple. You just saturate it with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and keep dabbing it until uh, spraying alcohol and dabbing it on a paper towel until you remove uh, the gel and pigment. Now you might have a little bit of residual staining that's quite all right as long as the gel is removed. Now we're going to go ahead and start with our Johens Elastic Gel. I really do enjoy this gel. It's fun to play with. It is super elastic, very stringy, very nice to play with. This gold looks very nice on the nail as well. I'm just using my, again, my little pointed metal tool here 
to apply it. You can use a dotter, you can use, uh, I find that if it's pointed, you'll get finer lines. So that might be a, a tip. I also find that um, you want to, to kind of cut off those lines along the edges of the nail. If you don't, that gel will tend to draw up and create these uh, kind of thick, blobs on the end of the nail so something to keep in mind when you're using the spider gel this really is a fun product to play with i also like to cure if i if i find that you know i'm, I'm looking at the design trying to figure out what i'm going to do next uh, i i like to cure what i've laid down already because the lines do tend to kind of settle into each other and spread out a little bit. So that first bit that I did, I went ahead and cured in advance and then did the, the last two lines above that. Now those finer uh, spidery lines tend to kind of wear off easily if you don't top coat. So you might consider that. Uh, I did a sample where I did top coat this white one here that I did top coat over it. I think it still looks quite nice. Not as shiny, of course, you're putting the, the matte over, but the shiny top coat over it looks just as good as well. So that might be a consideration if you want lasting wear with the spider gel. Now I'm using my first gel uh, jam gel to apply the gems. I've placed a little bit of the Johens um, metal micro beads into some of the gel and now we're just going to do our gem placement. Once we get everything placed we'll cure that. I cure 30 seconds in an LED and there is our finished nail. I hope everyone has enjoyed the demonstration. If you have, please like and subscribe. As always, I will leave links down below in the description box for all the products that I did use. And if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave those down below. I will get to them as soon as I can. As always, thank you for stopping by. And until next time, I will see you guys later.